Attempts to free ourselves from people and things we feel are disturbing can become a double-edged sword. Book banning has become a solution to restrict or eliminate access to topics that aren't liked or believed. To keep society strong, parts of our collective souls must be confronted to enable us to see the world from other perspectives. Book banning further exacerbates misunderstandings among people of a nation of states that should be united. Let's look into why banning certain books can cause inherited hate to continue and why those who support book bans should take constructive criticism from parts of certain books they themselves hold in high regard. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. Book bans have been occurring worldwide for a long time. How can those who regard freedom of expression as an inalienable right support book bans while also supporting restricting these same freedoms to others when they express beliefs and opinions they, the book banners, oppose. Banning books shows what those with a platform and power are willing to do to persuade people who admire or support them into believing that banning certain books, as well as writers and publishers, represents an action they must take to protect their beliefs and freedoms. Banning books or other types of publications is a peculiar form of censorship that represents the hidden fears and prejudices of those in favor of book banning. Indeed, we can go deeply into why those with religious beliefs, prejudices, and political objectives support book bans. But from this point on, let's look at books as not only reservoirs of knowledge, but also as informative, historical, and literary art forms. They instruct not only how to do things, but also describe the conditions and mental states of the book's subjects and how the authors see the world. It becomes easy to comprehend how selective and hypocritical those are in favor of book bans when they are engaged in conversations about people, things, and beliefs they hold in high regard that may have at one time in the past been banned or restricted. Their opinions are suddenly modified to make these at one time contested topics, things, and individuals part of their nation's national identity, creativity, or entrepreneurship. In this case, only positive attributes apply to those people and things they consider valuable to their society or group. Now, what would happen if we banned every book or publication we disagreed with? Freedom of speech is not an enshrined protection in many parts of the world. Examples of book banning for various reasons are too numerous to count, but they date back to antiquity. Book bans have led to the extermination of some forms of literature, beliefs, and even art, which powerful and influential people didn't like or viewed as threatening their existence. Reasons for book bans included commentary and criticism of influential individuals or leaders. Also, banning books for including depictions of sexuality not suitable for young age groups, as well as criticism of religion and religious leaders, which were often used to cover or to rally public opinion and influence government decisions, were frequently used to fan the flames for enacting book bans. The first emperor of China, Qing Shi Huang, in 213 BC, three years before his death, had books banned and then burnt. He even burnt scholars to prevent them from comparing his regime with past regimes. Under Hitler's authoritarian leadership in 1933, Nazi youth groups in Germany held large bonfires in front of large crowds in Berlin. They incinerated over 25,000 books by famous writers, scientists, and theorists who directly or indirectly reference opinions or viewpoints that went against what Hitler propagated. Radical religious groups must also be held responsible for banning and even destroying books and art collected over long periods of time which were internationally revered. At an archaeological site in Afghanistan and at the Mosul Museum in Iraq, which housed statues, books, and other relics, with some being over 3,000 years old, 
Members of the Islamic group ISIS cruelly destroyed rare priceless statues and other artifacts that can never be replaced. How far will book banning be allowed to go? Could the banning of books today once again lead to the burning of books as well as the burning of people and their culture? Those in favor of book bans must remove the blindfolds placed over their eyes and the plugs placed in their ears to see and hear everyone's uniqueness without being blindsided by those who want them to participate in supporting legislation and policies that have hidden motives they themselves may not fully understand. I would suggest that those in the U.S. who regard Bruce Springsteen's song, Born in the USA, as representing their country and culture, listen to two live crews' song, Banned in the USA. At another time, I will go further into the negative side effects of book bans and the attitudes of those who support it. Thank you for listening to Four Seas One Family. Please subscribe and download our podcast. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.